This week, WBZ and CBS News are looking at rising sea levels. Yeah, last night we showed you some of the innovative projects all across the country that are designed to protect our coasts. WBZ meteorologist Eric Fisher joins us now. And Eric, this is an issue that has had a big impact us on a uh, big impact on us here already. Yeah, water is definitely a problem when you live right by the sea, and many of our livelihoods are all dependent on it as well. You now, with every passing year, we've seen the threat and actually the, the incidence of flooding in New England continuing to rise. As my Colleague Sarah Robleski learned Boston is on the forefront trying to develop many creative and environmentally friendly ways to adapt. Our oceans are rising, our beaches are being ripped away, houses swept to sea, and here in New England, there is reason for immediate concern. We are experiencing rates a little bit faster than other parts of the country just because our land is sinking at the same time the ocean levels are rising. Receding glaciers have been contributing water to our global oceans for tens of thousands of years and they haven't stopped. Specifically for Massachusetts, we've had about a foot of sea level rise over the last hundred years and really we're probably going to see about that much again just over the next 30 years. After thousands of years of relatively stable sea level, rates have increased dramatically and are expected to continue, like a hockey stick since the 20th century. What that means is, one, just nuisance flooding, so that's just higher high tides, uh, not necessarily associated with a storm. So areas that, you know, would see a flood event every 10 years, you might be seeing that every year. And other areas, you may be seeing it multiple times a year. More flooding like this on a sunny day in Boston during a king tide. Walkways inundated with ocean water, and it's a likely scenario moving forward as the city is home to 47 miles of coastline. I think Boston has been very forward looking. Our state is is one of, you know, the top tier of actually um, acknowledging and attempting to address these climate change impacts. Climate Ready Boston. It's the city's initiative since 2016 to plan and prepare communities and neighborhoods for the long term impacts of climate change, including sea level rise and coastal flooding. While a number of projects are in progress, Langone Park and Popolo Playground in the north end is one of three completed projects within the Boston Park system that use the new design standards. This multi-million dollar project renovation included raising the harbor walk and fields to get out of the flood zone, but also adding an extra layer of flood protection, creatively making this sitting area structurally sound, a seawall to prevent flooding. It gets really difficult when we get up in that uh, high density, high developed area, especially a lot of our coastal cities were built on top of marshes. They didn't have the elevation, fill got brought in, and now you've got kind of the double impact of, you know, dense development in a vulnerable area, and additionally, those marshes aren't there. Those marshes used to absorb some of the floodwaters coming in. Another possible nature-based solution? The Emerald Tutu, a hopeful future choice for green infrastructure. It's a floating wetland that would function as a marsh without being a marsh. The idea of a northeastern professor and collaborators like Louisa Wise. This is a network of floating marsh mats. They're interconnected and they're in the near shore environment off the coast and they work to dampen the wave energy as they approach the shoreline. Each module is about seven feet in diameter and three feet deep, compressed and planted with a smooth cord grass to be really hardy and natural in the coastal environment. The interconnected floating mats can be arranged in a way to protect urban coasts like Boston from sea level rise and intensified storms. The long-term vision is to see thousands of these along the coastline. That'd be really amazing just to have the harbor dotted with these tiny little uh, floating marsh mats. I mean, one foot, two foot, three feet, they're all going to happen. It's just when they're going to happen. If we can make choices as a society, as a world, to try to slow down that rate of sea level rise, the impacts that we might see in 50 years might take 100 years, and it's a lot less expensive and less painful to adjust over a longer time frame. In Boston, I'm Next Weather Meteorologist Sarah Robleski, WBZ News. So interesting, especially the, the marshy circles there. We both wondered, how would you get a boat in and out? But I'm yeah. sure there's some creative way they could do it. And Eric, it's all about sort of looking ahead and making sure you're you're making the changes ahead of time. It's right. always easier to do something proactively yeah. rather than reactively when you've already had a big problem and right. you've already paid a lot of money because of it. So some good ideas out there. We'll see what yeah. happens. Where Sarah was standing, I remember a storm in 2018, water was pouring in there into the street. And it's interesting, sometimes when you get these bigger floods now, it kind of gives you a glimpse into, whoa, water can come in 
coming from here. Wait, water can sneak in over in this neighborhood. Right, Places yeah. you wouldn't expect seeing it necessarily. Mm -hmm. So true.